Okay, for assembling the Onyx heated bed, you're going to need the following pieces. The thermistor, the LED, the current limiting resistor, the insulating PTFE tubing. You'll need the 700 millimeter length of red wire, 12 gauge. The two pieces of 2.2 meter long, 26 gauge white wire. And one 2.2 meter long length of black wire. You'll also need some capped on tape to clean it all up. And of course, a soldering iron and solder. Let's get started. Okay, the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna shorten the PTFE tubing so it's just long enough for what we need, okay? And we're gonna measure about yay with our fingers here. And it's not very long, it's probably about a quarter of an inch and watch it disappear. Oh no, look, it didn't. Thought for sure that thing would go racing off as soon as I cut it. No, oh, that one did, didn't it? Well, fortunately, they include more, so if you're careful, <laughs> you can afford to screw it up a couple of times. Okay, so we're gonna take the, the thermistor out of its protective packaging AKA the post-it note and make a vain attempt to thread this really, really tiny wire into this really, really small hole. And my unassisted eyes are not up to this task. So that is when we cheat. Grab my little monocle and stick it on my eyeglasses so I can see what is going on. Okay. Oops. You guys can't see what I'm doing, but we're getting there. Damn it, where'd it go? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Fat fingers and really tiny things usually don't get along really well. Okay, come on. Here we go. There's one. Now let's get the other one on there. And make sure that you don't put it on the same one that you just put the other one on. I have done that in the past. Okay, there we go. Make sure they slide all the way down to the very end of the head of the thermistor, like so. Okay, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take our trusty pliers, our needle nose pliers, and we're going to grab that thing right behind the head, like so, and we're going to bend it, okay? The idea being is that bend is going to keep the thermistor in the hole, okay? I'll move some of this stuff away here. And you can see that it it's gonna you know it pokes through quite a ways okay and that's okay because we're gonna tape it down and then when the glass is on top of it it'll push the uh, the thermistor back up through the hole and it'll be okay but for now I'm gonna put my uh, pliers under there to give the board just a little bit of lift so I can get this taken care of Okay, and I probably should have used a little bit more insulation than I ended up using, but uh, what's on there is okay. So, hopefully you won't, yeah, you'll see the back of my head if I do it that way, so we're just going to do what we can here to make this work. There's 
one. I'm actually using the wrong tip on my solder iron. I just noticed that I've got my surface mount tip on it. So I need to switch tips and I'll be back in just a quick second. Okay, got the uh, soldering iron straightened out. Um, one of the things I did is I, while I was doing that is I set the onyx completely flat in there and then I bent out the legs for the thermistor as you see here, okay? Again, you should have a little bit more insulation than I did, but because uh, this is gonna be covered with Kapton tape, I'm really not that concerned about it, okay? Um, the next thing you're going to need to do is trim these two leads, and you can either do it with a, uh, an X-Acto knife like I am, being very careful, or you can use some good uh, cutters if you have them that will go flush. There we go. We have those removed. Okay. Now, just to to keep this thing protected, I'm going to put a little bit of capped on tape on it right now. Because it is a a delicate thing. They do not like to be handled much. And you want to be careful that you don't accidentally cover the resistor pads here or the, uh, the pads you'll be soldering here. Okay, That will do for right now. I'll add more later, of course. But for now, that's good enough. Okay, so the next step is to add what is called a current limiting resistor. Okay, and that goes here. And what this does is it allows the 12 volts powering the heated bed to drive the LED. It ensures that uh, the LED doesn't take too much power and burn itself out. And it will burn quick if we were to, to feed it the full amount of power that it can try to pull. Okay, so we'll just orient that part just like so. Tin that tip, get it cleaned up a little bit, and solder it down. See, it doesn't take very long. You just pop it and you're done. You don't want to sit here and park on these pads because with too much heat, you can lift the pad, and that's bad. I'm going to take this out of camera view so I can inspect it with uh, my monocle to make sure the solder joint is good. And it is. I'll kind of try to zoom in here a little bit. You can't really see it well, but you can tell that it's completely soldered and the solder is shiny. You don't want a dull looking solder because if the solder is dull, that is indicative of a cold solder joint and it will eventually fail if it hasn't already. Save this extra piece of PTFE tubing. Never knowing you might need some of that. So let's go ahead and we'll trim these leads. And we'll try to trim these leads. There's one. And there's two. Okay. Okay, so that's handled. And we won't cap on that up right now. We don't need to, or at least not right now. Now it's time for the LED. Now the LED has a polarity to it, okay? 
um, it's kind of difficult to see, but if you notice it's got a flat spot on it, okay, on this one edge, right here, okay. Well, that flat spot is the negative side of the LED. And if you look here on the Onyx, it's got the silk screen that shows you what goes where. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert the LED such that the flat is lined up. Okay. And then I'm going to hold it up just a little bit because what we're going to do here is just bend that over like so. Spread it just a little bit. Okay. And you didn't see that at all, did you? So here, let's move that just a little bit there. Wish I had a fancier camera set up, but this is all I got. And again, doesn't take much time at all. Just a little bit of heat. The solder will flow. And it will cover the, the wire. You also want to make sure that you don't have any uh, solder bridges. If you look between there, you can see that there's no solder joining those two pads. That would cause a short circuit and the LED wouldn't work. So let's go ahead and we'll trim those leads. Oops, that is not soldered down. Look at that. See? Pays to check, doesn't it? So we'll just throw a little bit more solder onto that. See if we can get that thing to flow. Oh, I see what I did. Yeah. Yeah, I did a dumb thing, but it worked out. So, don't do that. And if you didn't figure out what I did, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> okay. So now comes the big solder job. We've got two wires. We're going to use the 700 millimeter 12 gauge first. Okay, I've got the tool that I need now. Most of the wire cutters and strippers I have are not designed to deal with 12 gauge wire, which is, uh, is pretty big. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna strip about yay much off of there, providing of course your wire did not come pre-stripped. For this end of the wire, we are going to need the ring terminals out of the power supply kit, which I completely forgot we needed to get. So, there you go. Okay. See, ring terminal. Slide it in there like so. And we crimp that bad boy. <clears throat> okay. We'll strip the other end of this. And take about a half inch or so. Because what we're going to do is fan the wire. Okay, because I mean that's a you know that's a pretty big piece of wire. So what we're going to do here is spread the wire out. Okay, so you get kind of a fan shape to it. Okay, and then we're going to pre-tin that tab or pad. I mean, in order to give it a starting point to begin working with. And then we're going to lay that in here just like so and it's going to wick up that solder in there.
or at least that's the theory. And of course it's not wanting to work that way. So we're going to do what any good technician does. We are going to cheat. That like so. What I've done is I've bent the wire a little bit. So it'll go ahead and apply pressure on its own to that pad. And now we're just going to solder like there's no more. Once that cools, that'll be ready. And while that's cooling, let's go ahead and strip the one end off of the 12 gauge black wire. And again, we're going to take about a half inch or so. out put a bend in it like so okay and then we'll get this pad tinned I should note this iron is set for right around 395 degrees Celsius or thereabouts which is about 730 degrees Fahrenheit or something in that ballpark Let me get this positioned the way it needs to be And we start soldering. That one turned out lots better. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to let that one cool. The next step is to attach the <coughs> thermistor wires. And these are the thermistor signal wires that carry the resistance value from that thermistor there all the way up into the Rambo. So let's get these stripped. This time I could use my fancy tool. And just like before you're going to strip about a half inch or so. Like so. And you'll want to spindle the wire. a little bit more off that side. Okay. Because this is really small, 
I'm going to have to get my head in the way and look at it really close to be able to solder it properly. So I'm going to spare you guys that. Okay. There you go. That's all soldered up. And you need to make sure that uh, you've got good joints there. Okay. And now we are going to start taping some of this up to get it all nice and protected. First, we're going to move these a little out of the way so I can get capped on in there. It's kind of a, it protects the wires, adds, makes a bit of a strain relief. Keeps things good. Okay, so now we've got those, those together a bit. And we'll start at the solder pads work our way down. And there we go. That is ready to be installed.